woke up that morning and switched on the TV and I saw the first tower being hit. Totally captivating, I was completely fixated on the screen. And I watched people jumping out of those windows to avoid being burnt alive. Not one moment did I think these people have families, fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, not one moment. It was payback. It was retribution. It was fair dues. That's how it felt. Ethnically, uh, I'm uh, Turkish and grew up in North London. I wasn't different in any way. You know, we'd all go, do normal things that teenagers would do. We'd go out on the weekend and we'd sleep it off the next day. I developed a keen interest in the Islamic faith. That sort of accelerated when I went to university. I encountered someone from Al Mahajaroon. What I was taught, it was an obligation on every single Muslim to work towards an Islamic state. You're talking about forcing everyone to wear niqabs. Men and women would not be able to interact. People's dress code would be monitored. We're talking about stoning people, killing people for leaving the Islamic faith. We learn our Islam from Umar Bakri Muhammad. He could do no wrong. He was almost uh, like a father figure. It felt amazing, actually. It, it felt like I had a purpose here and someone had a plan for me. The teaching would dehumanize non-Muslims. They were kuffar. I mean, I remember the chap that actually brought me into the organization. We were on the train one. He said, oh, I can smell these dirty kuffar. It should have upset me, but it didn't. It was normal to see non-Muslims like that. I was at every demonstration, every lecture, every single event that we had, I was there. The way it's presented is if you question something you're taught, you're actually questioning God. We had a number of meetings with someone who was external to the organization, who was a convert to Islam. This person wanted to train a group of individuals to potentially carry out terrorist attacks in London. At one point, we actually spoke about potentially putting a bomb in, in Tower Bridge tube station. The thing that's striking for me is that alarm bells didn't go off. What do you mean you want to put a bomb in a public place and kill people? I can't understand why I didn't feel that way. The only concern that I had at that time was, am I going to, going to be trained properly, adequately, to fulfill my mission? Not that, you know, I was going to potentially kill innocent people. We had a, a dower store. Some senior members of Al Mahadrun turned up and they had a big poster saying, um, the Magnificent 19, glorifying the 19 hijackers on 9-11. One lady approached us, she was looked very distressed. While she was crying, she said, my brother was in those Twin Towers and he died on that day. I looked at the face of the other senior member. There was not an, a sign of remorse on his face. It was almost a smirk. And at that point, I just felt, I, I, can't, I cannot associate myself with you. Leaving the organization was quite a difficult decision for me. My entire social network was based around the organization. I cut off from my family. Only recently, I got in touch with sort of family friends. One of them was actually getting married. I went to the wedding. What was painful for me, you know, whilst I was going around being an extremist and a hothead and hating the West, people were getting on with their lives. My friendships that I formed in that organization are no longer, because I'm seen as an outcast now. I'm seen as someone who betrayed the organization. My relationship with my faith is very much how I was before I was radicalized. 
what Islam is about is connecting with God so that you can be a better human being. I'm still proud to be a Muslim. The type of Islam that I live now is one that is authentic. Grounded upon mercy, compassion, justice, and that Islam is about being a good human being.